Oh, oh, wrong charge. common denominator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Let's talk about something important. Put that coffee down. I'm not here to waste your time. Everyone has access to the information. We just know how to analyze it better. Where else are you going to have this much ah. fun? You the man. You the man. Todd Father. Show me the money. See what I've been doing. Had to trip on my bag. Had to trip on my bag. Wow. Had to trip on my bag. Wow. Had to trip on my bag. Yeah. Had to trip on my bag. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Well, it's no trick to make a lot of money. All you want is to make a lot of money. What is going on, everybody? Welcome what back up, to up? another live episode of Learn Crypto. My name is Nick Hellman. I'm Todd Butterfield. It has been a while, but that's because the market has not been doing much of anything. We've been more active on Patreon, Discord, and Twitter, doing some trades on altcoins, but the big boys have not had much movement at all. Also, we have had some pretty severe weather here in St. Louis, but sub, <laughs> sub-zero right. temperatures as well as some snow and ice, so that kind of puts a damper on things as well. But we are here live today. We got some things to talk about. We're going to have the Todd father over there look at the charts and see what Wyckoff and Elliott Wave are saying here for Bitcoin. As you know, our key level was 3440 on Bitcoin for a long time. If that hit and closed on the daily, we then were saying a price target of 2.8K to 3K. Well, on Coinbase, it did close somewhere around 3430. So that's a little too close to call. And that's why we were saying a moment of truth for Bitcoin. The, the price action that occurs here in Bitcoin right now is really going to dictate what our price objectives are, at least here in the short term. We also have fidelity information, grayscale information, Tron information, Bad Binance act. information. Although the market has been red, the fundamentals and the news has been quite bright and quite bullish, actually. So uh, well, it's exciting to talk about that. We'll dig into it. And of course, we will go to the comment section to go ahead and answer any questions you guys may or may not have about crypto news, fundamentals, or technical analysis. Let's make sure to smash that like, share, and subscribe button. And let's make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below with your Rapids RPD wallet address or Telegram handle if you are part of the RPD tip bot over there on Telegram because we will be giving away 10,000 RPD just for being an active community member. What else you got, Todd, before we get started? Anything? Not too much. We're going to talk about stocks. Metals market's giving us big gains since we were last live. So uh, GDX we're going to go over that. very well off the, you know, that was something. Usually at the end of the show, I said, Todd, what do they need to buy? He was adamant in the last show about GDX, buy GDX, buy GDX. It's been a nice 12% or so gainer yep. uh, since that live show. So uh, on so, precious metals, that's pretty big. So sweet Wyckoff method. I mean, it was perfect for Wyckoff. So it shows that stuff works. Shout out to everybody in here. Montana Crypto Love, S. Moxon, Chris Canine, Crypto Cotter. It's been a while. Glad to have you back. Clifford Chapman making his way over here. Double T Crypto in the house representing Digibyte, of course. Guys, if you got extra change, that's where I put my extra Satoshis. Throw it in Digibyte at these price levels. Slowly accumulate with whatever is left from your other trades. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. Market capitalization. $113.4 billion with the Bitcoin dominance pretty much the exact same at 53.4%. Slight red across the board with the recent price action. Bitcoin is 3,457, teetering on that key level of 3,440 that we've been talking about now for weeks. XRP made a massive run in Satoshi value, but it has given it all back down 5% today, back below 31 cents. If you were in our Discord, we did have some sell objectives. I said I would definitely be a seller at 10K Satoshis and wouldn't have minded lightening up the bag when I sent that out. It was 9,500. We did hit a high of 9,700 sats on the dollar or on the sat, I guess I should say. And it has come skyrocketing back down with a couple red candles. Ethereum still above $106. EOS still sideways at 232. And even Tether says, looky here, guys, we're having a red day, but still a penny over the benchmark of $1. Hopefully you guys didn't sell at $0.80 cents during all that FUD surrounding Tether because it has surpassed the dollar mark. 
Biggest winners for today, not going to be much, but we do have Bytum up 3.88%. Holo is the biggest winner for today, up 3.85%. This is one that got way ahead of itself and has had a massive couple red candles, corrective red candles, and Satoshi Price. Got as high as, I think, 46 Satoshis all the way back down into the 20s today. Let's continue to see how this price action looks. This is one I want to get into, uh, but you guys over at Discord know I'm looking at lower levels and exactly what those levels may be. Veritasium, Augur, Binance, Electronium, all slightly green on the day. Nothing too spectacular. So, Todd, you need to look at the charts. Where are we going? You know, we're seeing slight red across the board, pretty much flat for today, which in crypto land is kind of rare. So what do you see on the right. charts? Chart really hasn't changed much. We keep stabbing these new lows. Uh, first, I want to show the shorts and longs. You can see the red here is shorts. It has increased some here, not uh, anything showing a major low, but at least coming, uh, you know, shorts are coming in a little bit. Longs came off a little and they've increased a little bit here uh, in the last day and a half or so. So n really not much info there. I think if you throw some Elliott Wave on this, we'll go over some Wyckoff chart here in a minute, but... If you throw the Elliott wave on it, I didn't really change it much. I was trying to call this an A, B, C, D, E down to here. And uh, we just moused around and came down again in five waves. So I really think we've done an A down. This is a B. And this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I, I think this low here at that 33.55 on Bittrex, I think that's the low to key off of. If we break that, I'm still not that bearish. I think we could go down to a new low. But I, I still think with all the news and everything that's coming with the Fidelity, Van Eck, and everything, I, I think you just got to still try to accumulate for longer term. So uh, that's kind of the chart there. Litecoin, you can see a little stronger chart. I mean, we had the low down here at the 23 when we came out of this triangle. We had the low there at 27.75, I think it was. And these have just been stabbing the lows as well. Uh, when we come back, I'll show uh, the charting software. It's kind of continue to give us a buy here. We threw this in Discord earlier because we keep having volume go to new lows while price keeps hitting higher lows here. So I still like Litecoin. I, for some reason, I would guess that Litecoin is probably going to lead us out of here if uh, nothing else. This is GDX, the one I was talking about over and over on our last broadcast. You can see here, uh, hold on. reason I was so bullish, we was back here one of these days. It was our last broadcast. We had the uh, oversold technometer, the most oversold we had been in uh, quite a while. If you follow any Wyckoff or have taken the courses, this was a jump. This was a backup. You can go back here, preliminary support, selling climax, big volume here on the selling climax, automatic rally, secondary test, and then really just accumulation or distribution. We had an up thrust here, which brought us down to uh, lower boundaries again. I'd showed this test here was low volume. These two red bars, nothing. We had volume come in on the upside. This is the exact same chart I had up last week. And uh, you know we've had now five or six days straight up out of here. Even the GDXJ, I think I got this one marked up still. For some reason it... Yeah, when I, it logs me out when I did the GX. It's the same thing here. I wanted to show this because you can see down here the technometer is 63. That's the most overbought we've been in ages. So normally it's a 63 would be bearish, but you're getting big volume here. You're getting a big force index. You're getting nice green bars here. So this is really more of a uh, blast off technometer. So you don't want to sell this. You want to try to buy a technometer maybe back to neutral or oversold. So... This one should have a lot further to go. GDX, GDXJ, all the metals. I don't think this is a ending or anything like that. I think it's a start. I think this is a markup phase. We're probably in the middle of it. So uh, I don't know what that does for the cryptos. How way they move up together. This is UUP, which is the dollar index I've been uh, so bearish on. Uh, currently, I have no positions, but I still think you want to be short here. Technometer was bearish up here. And uh, we're at 49. I'm probably going to still go back short in here, but I think the dollar is rolling over as well. So we'll go over a few more charts when we come back and uh, go over the uh, charting software. Sounds good. No real questions in the chat box. So we'll go into the first bit of major news. Uh, this did come out, I believe, yesterday. 
but let's discuss it and let's read over it. So Fidelity will reportedly launch its crypto custody business in March. The move by the 72-year-old financial services giant is seen as another step towards the wider acceptance of cryptocurrency as an investment class. Fidelity Investments isn't wasting much time in following through on the latest cryptocurrency initiative. The financial services giant, giant will reportedly launch Fidelity Digital Asset Services in March. That is in two months, guys. That would be the end of first quarter 2019. The news comes less than four months after Fidelity first announced the creation of the new company, which will provide custody and trading services for cryptocurrencies to institutional grade investors, including hedge funds and market intermediaries. The 72-year-old firm's interest in the space has been seen as evidence of wider acceptance of cryptocurrency as an investment class, its own standalone investable asset classes, which is what we're striving for here, guys. Now, realize you guys have probably heard of Fidelity. Why is it so important that Fidelity gets involved? You know, we got Coinbase for custody or Grayscale for custody, right? Well, this company has been around for 72 years, is trusted by institutions and very high net worth individuals and currently has $2.6 trillion in assets under management. That believe, means right now there is $2.6 million invested and held in custodian by Fidelity. If Fidelity simply says they launch their platform, they're going to have Iris X scheduled to come out in the second quarter or third quarter of 2019 as well. Uh, all they got to do is say, hey guys, Maybe 1% to 5% of your investable asset class we recommend to put into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, uh, similar to what they probably say with commodities or gold or silver or oil. That is a big number. Do the math on that. Organizations providing crypto custodial and trading services such as Coinbase and BitGo have sprung from the cryptocurrency industry and are solely focused on these investments. But none of these firms, like I was just saying, have the size and brand recognition of fidelity. Fidelity has enormous experience with large-scale security systems and private and public key cryptography. Quote, Fidelity has no doubt thought through the operational security practices and custody of these crypto assets. The startup of Fidelity Digital Asset Services dovetails with a huge surge in crypto investment by some of the country's largest college endowments, including Yale, which happened earlier or at the end of last year, which has built a reputation in recent years for its investment prowess. Yale has invested in two crypto funds. So although Yale has not gone to open market and bought Bitcoin, they are invested in two funds similar to a hedge funds, which are diversify the, diversifying themselves across crypto assets in the ecosystem. Fidelity Digital Asset Services will initially provide storage of Bitcoin, but has plans to expand this service to Ether and three or four other largest cryptocurrencies by market cap. The company will help its clients execute trades and provide other support. Um, off the top of my head, they have talked about Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, no Bitcoin Cash. I think XRP, XLM were the other ones they've talked about and possibly in Ethereum Classic. Bitcoin Cash was left out. Bitcoin SV was left out. I think maybe... They're a little nervous about the, the direction that those two products have come. Nonetheless, this is interesting. This hasn't been uh, confirmed or denied, which is actually a good thing, by the founder of Fidelity uh, due to legal obligations, I'm, I'm assuming. But if this does occur at the, in March at the end of Q1 2019, we also have Eris X coming out in 2Q or 3Q of 2019. We have backed exchange that is still on the table, probably more realistically in 2Q 2019. And... The Bitcoin ETF is back on the table, which we will talk about here shortly <laughs> and what that means for the timing of a potential VanEck Bitcoin ETF. Now, Coindesk just said Fidelity states its crypto trading and storage platform is in final testing. Actual trading? They said they're going to help their institutional investors actually Dang. facilitate crypto trading, not just custodial services. I mean, that's, yeah. That's a home run. That's big. And you add all that up, and the micro, macro fundamentals, like I was talking about, are looking good, uh, even during these bearish times. Good news after good news is coming out, and really this is the tip of the iceberg. And why do I say it's the tip of the iceberg? Because when you have Fidelity launching their product, TD Ameritrade launched their product, New York Stock Exchange launched their product, uh, Vanek launched their product. These are big players, big names. And what do you think they're going to do? You think they're going to build this infrastructure, build this product base and uh, employment base, and then not say that their investors should invest in this asset class? Right. Probably not. 
So you, the, these aren't Coinbase where institutional players have never heard of them before. Yes, we know them. Yes, they're some of the most trusted in the crypto ecosystem for us as crypto investors, but not for your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, who are just traditional stock investors and let their brokerage or brokerage account, the broker or brokerage account kind of manage their assets. And that's what is what is still coming. You know, so we'll see what happens here as far as the timeline is concerned. And I've got clients that are starting to talk about Bitcoin and cryptos. I mean, it's not when you bring it up now, it's not, uh, you know, they're, they're talking about it. And I also have got an extremely good customer of mine from years ago has requested a dinner with our wives. And I'm going to guess he wants to talk cryptos. So we will see. But all that's coming. I still said you want to look at a few charts over there, Todd? Some yep. crypto charts for these individuals? First of all, I'm gonna, yeah, I got a couple things here because I got a lot on my mind. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I want to go over that quickly. I've had this up here. We have continued a little bit higher. So I want to drag that up now because nothing I don't think has changed. I actually added on to my shorts today for pro traders. So I still think we're topping out somewhere, heading back down. I know there's some Discord people following me. So I wanted to throw that up there. Uh... I also want to bring up, this is a Litecoin chart that I tweeted out. I'm bringing this up here because this is a three-month one to show that the OP, which is volume, continues to hit new lows here. And uh, we've marked some of the buys that we've been on. This is when we came out of this triangle, broke to new lows, technometer is oversold. And then here you can see 35.67 on the technometer today. Uh, so once again, I mean, risk reward, coming off the software, Wyckoff, et cetera. I mean, uh, selling coming in, price is continuing to hold, and we're extremely oversold now. So I still think Litecoin could uh, lead us higher. And we made some good trades on Litecoin. Unfortunately, we didn't get the biggest winner there. We did on the show publicly and in Discord say to buy Litecoin around $22. We had a sell price target of $42, and it got up to $41.50 something. So maybe if you were trying to sell a little lower than us, congrats on that. I did not get my fill uh, filled, unfortunately. Uh, but remember, guys, it's not just about, oh, I didn't sell the top. If you followed a buy signal that we were doing at $22 and now we're still sitting at $32, that is still a big-time winner in a very short period of time, especially considering a lot of people, when Litecoin was at $20, it's like, oh, my God, Litecoin's going to $5, sell, sell, sell. And then we moved to an upside, almost hitting our price target of $42 all in the course of a week or so. So uh, you got to keep all that in perspective. If Litecoin turns up here, I think it could get really exciting. So in front of us is a Bitcoin chart. Uh, really not much different there. The OP is coming down. Not quite as a good a buy signal. Technometer is 40.64, not quite as oversold. So uh, you know, we could maybe you know, sit down here at these lows, but I still think we're going to resolve this thing to the upside. So, And on the software, I've told a few people, I had found a glitch in the software that it wasn't bringing in all the exchanges that are available. So now the API provider is uh, coding what he needs to do, where he's going to code all the uh, exchanges together and then bring it to our developer. So that's supposed to be any day. When he does that, the developers switch over a few symbols. I think I'm going to have an unbelievable working product. So we're kind of just holding off for that. But I, uh, I'm going to be pretty excited about that. So. Shout out to Ravi P for the subscription. We appreciate it. We are now over 6,200 subscribers, slowly but surely growing even in the bear market. We started at around zero at the start of the bear market, now up to 6,220 or something like that. So and here's SPY. Here's where I give in sales. Again, I did sell today near the close. We were overbought down here. We didn't come down to oversold. We're kind of backed overbought. I'm going to bring up Square because that's one that we talk about a lot here that we've gotten almost every move here uh this is a current square you can see uh we were overbought up here again at this uh, 78 level setting now 44 neutral so i'd like to see some type of break if we could get it down to like 61 i think that would be probably the next buy but we'll watch that one but for right now no positions waiting on a pullback and then i'm going to do one more because i i might have gave this trade here TLT, that is a uh, long bond. I had a buy here on the, t the, on the uh, oversold technometer. I did put some on here on uh, Pro Traders. And uh, today we finally got a little bit of a lift off. We are at uh, overbought. 
So this could be, uh, you know, if you're Elliott Wave, you could say maybe five ways down, ABC back up. I did raise stops today. I'd hate to see this low taken out. Uh, I really don't want to see overlap over 121.02 probably. So this one, if it's going to go, it needs to probably go now. And then I'd be looking for short sales as well. I'm not going to really give those at the moment because I got people that pay more for those. But I'd look for some uh, short sales here too. Awesome. Let me steal this. Uh, we kind of already hinted at it as far as the timeline is concerned. You might, all, you might know that VanX SolidX did retract its Bitcoin ETF. They cited it due to government shutdown now. Whether that was the full truth, nobody really knows. I said they probably had a, an idea to upgrade it and or were stealing some uh, information from the new Bitwise Bitcoin ETF, which is still on the block. That was just proposed about a month or so ago. Essentially, they have resubmitted their Bitcoin ETF with a couple rule adjustments, some minor modifications, which is awesome. But... The downside is this does restart the maximum 240-day approval uh, for time frame that they have to uh, get approved or denied. So can the SEC approve it early? Yes, there's going to be subsequent check marks. But again, the final day of approval or denial is in 240 days. I would suspect that uh, you know you, we can hope for the Bitcoin ETF approval, but more realistically, it probably will occur on the final approval which is scheduled for the fourth quarter of 2019 for this Bitcoin ETF. And also the Bitwise ETF with the timing of their proposal would be in fourth quarter of 2019 as well. They're focused more on the physical uh, Bitcoin ETF over there. Now, why does that matter? Well, if it is true that Fidelity hits up their adoption, their custodian platform for 1Q 2019, then 2Q 2019, we get backed exchange as well as Eris X. Q3, we have the Eris X edition of new crypto assets. And then moving into Q4, we hopefully have the approval of at least one Bitcoin ETF, most likely the Vanek one. Vanek is the largest gold ETF on the market, has tons of ETFs on their books, very well known for their ETF products that they have. And that is the one that has the most oomph with it as far as approval from the SEC. That would be a lot of bullish catalyst towards the end of 2019, which hopefully will sustain the market turnaround leading into 2020 and 2021, where I believe that we are going to see not only all-time highs in Bitcoin, but much higher all-time highs in Bitcoins into the 30s, 40s, and $50,000 range for Bitcoin. I'm saying it, write it down. We're looking out another year or so, but I think all of these mic macro fundamentals start to come into play, starting with the Fidelity Cust Custodian leading into the end of 2019 here for the crypto industry. A lot of channels are throwing a lot of negative news out there, et cetera, on, even on the Bitcoin ETF, et cetera. I'd be careful following news here because bull markets will climb a wall of worries. So forget all that bearish news and shit. You, you need to be accumulating. All right, it's that time of the show. Let's give away some cryptocurrencies from our last live show right here. Was the Bitcoin low in? Well, so far it sure is. NASDAQ bullish on Bitcoin. We talked about Ripple a little bit. And if you did not know, uh, yesterday, Ripple did have a nice multi-green candle rally, but it has given it all back up. But let's go ahead and click over here. Hold on. Amount of unique commenters, 1 in 39 chance of winning 10,000 RPD. Let's roll it up. And the winner is... Well, that's us, so we can't do that one. <laughs> no, I'll take it, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> We're keeping it. Sorry, guys, nobody won. Richard Main Tengens, there you go. And he left his Telegram handle because he is part of the RPD tip bot, so it's as easy as that. I'm going to shoot it back over to Todd here in a second, and I will give him his 10,000 RPD over in the tip bot so it's public and transparent for everybody. So let's like this video. Let's subscribe to this awesome channel and leave the comment in the comment section below with your Rapids RPD uh, wallet address or your Telegram handle if you are a part of the tip bot. It's as easy as that. Rewarding you guys for educating yourself and being active community members here at Learn Crypto. What I'm you got, Todd? Well, we're going to go over, Paul asked for Xilinx on the software. This is the stock software. So here's Xilinx. There's uh, you know, probably not much to add here that I can, 
that I can uh, say. I didn't get a really good oversold reading on the technometer, but that's because there was no selling in Xilinx. So I think the thing you want to look for is, uh, you know, Wyckoff is big for in bull markets, buy the strong st stocks and bear markets sell short the weak ones. So if we go to compare symbols and add in SPY, which is the Standard & Poor's 500 ETF, I think what it shows, what it tells you is, uh, you can see here the purple line is the SPY. This was a big sell-off scare that we had. And if you look at the black line, which is Xilinx, you can see that continuing to trend higher, higher highs, higher lows. So if you were bullish the SPY down here like I was the day of the low, I was not on Xilinx. Uh, that'd be a mistake of mine because that one would be way outperforming. But, uh, you know, at that point, anything holding up like this was a 50% pullback of this rally when the S&P fell out of bed. So that was the, uh, that was telling you that somebody's accumulating Xilinx in its 33 to 20 level. Then now we wake up and it runs to 47. So again, Wyckoff, you buy those stocks, those coins that are strongest in bear markets or strongest in corrections because those are the ones being quietly accumulated uh, below the scenes. So that would have been the best way to caught that one. And then again, my software didn't have a really oversold reading, et cetera, because there was no selling coming in. So uh, it didn't give you that close your eyes by the way we would have done it was look for the outperformance. So, what else we need to go over here? I got a couple more things. I just got done sending that individual his 10,000 RPD in the tip bot. If you're over there, you can verify that. We are going to talk briefly about what is going on with Tron and this BitTorrent token. Now, guys. I don't like the token economics behind BitTorrent token. I also think they're going to have some issues. But what has it done for Tron Price? We saw a high of 800 Satoshis. We sold here at 730. It fell down to 600. And we had one more rally leading into the token sale. A lot of people are getting the confusion of the Binance launch pad date for the token sale and the actual airdrop of the BTT token. So it will be interesting to see how the Tron Price continues moving here forward. To give you some background information, Tron BTT airdrop dates, exchanges, and tips, all you need to know. BitTorrent and Tron have partnered to give birth to a Tron TRC-10. Similar to an ERC-20, this TRC-10 will run on the blockchain, just like an ERC-20 runs on the Ethereum blockchain. It will be used in the BTT platform to transact services and rewards and reward to use of computing resources by participating users. To get the coin into circulation, Tron and BitTorrent plan to reward TRX holders with 10.1% of circulating supply of BTT over several years to come, all the way to 2025, they will be distributing these tokens. Per Justin Sun's tweet, the founder of Tron, latest announcement said that the Tron BTT airdrop will start on February 11th, 2019 so you actually still have about 12 days the binance labs launched the binance launchpad platform was used for a, an additional token sale of these tokens that has already ended so you guys missed out on that opportunity i wouldn't have recommended to buy it anyways it was at a price of 0 0.00012 us dollars now, if you are a Tron holder or maybe you want to accumulate, you think Bit BTT is the next big thing, how do you get your tokens? What you need to do is you need to be a Tron holder on any of these exchanges or the Tron desktop wallet. So I would say probably just hold it on Binance to be the safest. And you will get it in a one-to-one -one ratio starting on February 11th. I believe there is going to be an airdrop on a monthly basis, maybe even a daily basis. I'm not sure the token economics behind that. It is not in this article. But I do know it is a one-to-one -one ratio starting on February 11th. So what will the Tron price do? Uh, traditionally, you would see Tron price have another run leading up to around February 11th, probably February 9th. You would have a massive correction uh, leading into the 11th, and then also after the snapshot occurred, another massive correction. Since they are doing this distribution all the way through 2025, it's going to be an interesting one. You know, they're doing a long-term airdrop, kind of like what we're seeing with waves starting on February 2nd. It's going to be an aggregate uh, where it's going to be a monthly airdrop to those holders. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm not really a fan of getting Tron here around 800 Satoshis. 
And uh, I'm not too keen on the technology behind BTT and the inflationary rate of that token moving forward is going to be quite high for the initial year or so moving forward. So I think that's going to create a lot of downward pressure. Right now, you are seeing a nice price spike over on Binance with it being listed over there. But I believe to counter the normal Binance dump, there is some manipulation going over there because there was massive, I'm talking several hundred Bitcoin buy and sell walls on day one of trading of this token, which is unseen across the board and other asset classes. Uh, so I definitely think that is some insiders uh, putting up some buy and sell walls to create some stability in that price, at least here in the short term. All right, guys, for one thing, we give obviously a lot of uh, price targets. We talk about stocks, we talk about cryptos. Nick goes over a ton of fundamentals. So legally, I am registered, and, uh, and Nick is in the business as well and under all kinds of uh, legislation. So we do run disclaimers, even though other channels say they don't have to, no one needs to. And if you're never wrong, you don't have to run a disclaimer, which all of us are wrong. And uh, so uh, we run disclaimers because I've, I cannot give stock advice unless the states I'm registered in. So I'm obviously not registered in all 50 states. So uh, do your own research. This is not individual investment advice. And uh, we are going to run a disclaimer here right now, if I can find it on my screen. Where is my disclaimer? There is a high degree of risk involved in trading cryptocurrencies. Our thoughts and ideas are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your personal advisor or do your own research. Past results are not indicative of future returns. There we go. There we go. We got John Libby in the house saying that he is super bullish on the BP BTT token and said to try using BitTorrent. There you go. Mark Lane said, yes, it is every month for six years on the 11th, he believes, for Tron holders. So that is why I'm not sure how this price action will occur because it is a long-term airdrop. I do know the percentage does decrease as the years go by. Crypto Cotter says, cheer all. Got to feed the kids. I'll catch up on the upload later. Peace out. Nice to have you back in here, Crypto Cotter. Make sure to keep tuning in. There we go. And then lastly, before I go to the last news article, BA says, Nick, do you think Satoshi has anything to do with all the hacks going on? Good God, like $1.7 stolen out of thin air. No, I do not believe Satoshi would do that because he created something and, and has fought for this ecosystem. You know, He wouldn't want to destroy what he's creating. If he was going to be doing hacks, he would probably do hacks against uh, other products and platforms directly. I don't think he'd be hacking exchanges as overall that brings down the entire perception of the market. Again, these hacks are not occurring on the top exchanges or any of the hardware wallets. Instead, they are occurring on smaller and vulnerable exchanges, which we always talk about. If you have to go on a small exchange to get cryptocurrencies, move them to a more reliable exchange that has insurance like a Binance or a Coinbase or even a Gemini, or move them to a hardware wallet because when you buy there, you do take on exchange risk, meaning, well, you have the liability to have your coins frozen or stolen like the case of Cryptopia and these other smaller exchanges. Now, I know there was one, where was it out of? Canada or something, some tiny exchange is saying they have lost access to their hardware wallets. That to me sounds like an exit scam. And also with some of these hacks or even Philicone apparently getting crypto stolen, look at the time of the year that this always occurs on. It is around tax season. So they might be trying to avoid the taxes here. That could be another option here for Philicone and others. This happened last year during the massive bull run as well. But man, that is a heavy risk to run there. You might get to avoid taxes, but eventually it will catch up with you. And I think just going about things the right way and transparency and transparency transparently will keep the IRS off your tail and you'll still have plenty of gains to be had in this ecosystem. Shout out to the new subscriber and let's go ahead and look at the last article I have over here. And then Todd, you got to hit up some more charts. So what is this about? Yes, there is a Bitcoin fund you can invest in now. We talk about fidelity and, and institutional grade investments. There is actually Bitcoin Trust, a Ethereum Classic Trust, where people can invest in their IRA today. Although it is not from a big name company, but it is Grayscale. And uh, this oh is talking goodness. a little bit about it. Opening up a can of worms. All At right. last count, the securities exchange 
the Securities and Exchange Commission has rejected applications for 11 Bitcoin exchange traded funds. And earlier this month, Bitwise Asset Management threw its hat in the ring when it filed an initial registration statement with the SEC for a physically held Bitcoin ETF. This is the ETF along with the resubmitted VanEck ETF that I believe have chance at approval in the fourth quarter of 2019. Despite the dramatic drop in Bitcoin's price Zid, since mid-December 2017, there remains substantial interest in the digital currency. And investors itching to invest in a Bitcoin fund already have an option at their disposal with Grayscale Bitcoin Trust with trades under the ticker symbol GBTC and has been open to investors publicly since 2015. This is not a fly-by-night company. It has been available for a very long time. This is sponsored by Grayscale, like I said it, like I said here a second ago. And according to Morningstar, GBTC tops the list of best-performing exchange-traded funds on a three-year basis with an annualized returns of nearly 105 percent even with this massive dip in price so currently right now the way this works guys currently right now gptc you can buy one share for three dollars and 98 cents what does that mean well what that does is that entitles you to 0.01 bitcoin one percent of a bitcoin if you do the math on that that means you'd be paying around four thousand dollars for one bitcoin well nick scam that's a little bit of a premium how does that work well the reason you have the premium is, number one, there is going to be fees for Grayscale. Because why? They are taking the custodial risk. You do not have to hold it. You have an IOU with that share that is backed one-to-one. -one. It's a 0.01 Bitcoin per share backed by Grayscale, which they are liable to hold. Well, Nick, this, this premium seems a little lower than at all-time highs when you were paying around $30,000 for a Bitcoin, if you did the math, because the shares of GPTC were $29.60, well, that's because it is an open and free market. Just like the stock market, the shares of GBTC and any grayscale investment are up to supply and demand, just like the crypto market. So the premium grew as more traditional investors wanted to invest in Bitcoin, but didn't trust the likes of Coinbase or didn't want to go through the complexity of learning how to be liable and responsible and holding their own Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. That's the way market uh, supply and demand works. That's the way the free market works, the stock market works, and the crypto market works. There are individuals out there that are saying, why would anybody use Grayscale? It's a fraud. It's a scam to take your money. No, they are serving as a third-party investment vehicle option for traditional investors who don't know about cryptocurrencies but want to get involved in the speculative market. On any of those kind of assets and investments, you are going to pay a premium, which costs you a little bit up front. But again, it does help you on the back end if you don't want to be liable for the custodian to hold these crypto assets uh, moving forward. So we've talked about that before in the past because uh, I mean, like my IRA clients at Schwab bought that at uh, huge premiums. So that has nothing to do with Grayscale being a fraud like other channels was saying. It has to do with supply and demand in the marketplace. Everybody was running to that because that was the only way they could buy Bitcoin in their IRA accounts. So everyone and, knows that. And currently right now, that's still the only way that individuals can have access but hopefully that will be opened up here soon with Fidelity, ERSX backed, etc. So Grayscale is just going to be another option. I expect to see that premium again here at the $3.98 mark. I think this is probably the lowest premium that has been on that GPTC in a long time. Right. So if you do have IRA money, you know, you don't want to go into debt with the credit card or you don't have cash to get involved in cryptos. Although you are paying a premium and you're not going to have the physical uh, Bitcoin, but you can still maybe ride the next wave. You know, maybe looking around these levels with this low premium is an opportunity to put some of those IRA uh, investment dollars uh, to work here in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. Cool. Nice explanation. What do we got going on? You got a couple charts to look at over there, Todd, or any questions here in the chat box? Don't forget to smash that like button. Don't forget to leave that subscription. And, of course, leave that comment in the comment section below with that Rapids wallet address for a chance to win 10,000 RPD coins. We got a lot of charts coming out here. Somebody wants you to look at EOS, TRX, HOT. What you got going on? I'm gonna do TRX for sure. The software has an issue on it for a date that I told uh, Vladimir overnight that he said he'd fix, but 
I'm going to throw a little bit of Elliott Wave on this because I think it's probably appropriate here. We've had this five waves up. Fourth waves are normally triangles, which I think this is what this was. Fifth waves can blow off, which is what this was. Now you're looking for an ABC back down to previous fourth wave support. And uptrends, I would like to buy a spring. A lot of Y coffins do that. So I would probably nibble here because it has been strong off the lows, but I would uh, much rather buy it down here at uh, 20400 or so, down here at this previous fourth would be a much lower risk. So again, I probably would nibble here because you could say it's had another five waves up off this low with an ABC. So uh, invest at your own risk. I'm not a big fan of uh, Tron myself, but uh, that doesn't mean it can't be traded short term. BA says, Nick, do you have any good thoughts about Loom? Um, I do like Loom Network as a second layer solution, a second layer scaling solution on top of Ethereum. Uh, my only issue is currently they don't really have uh, that many in developers utilizing that second layer solution as of now. Also, I think they're going to see a lot of competition from uh, new new uh, protocols such as EOS that has a massive growing DAP ecosystem. And I don't like the fact that when you are investing, quote unquote, in the Loom network, you are getting the Loom token, which is still an ERC-20. Um, so that kind of hurts the token economics in my mind just a little bit. Again, I like the second layer solution. It is up and running with an SDK. I just don't know how the value prop is going to, uh, to uh, kind of follow through over there with the Loom ERC-20 token. And EOS is kind of like the same Bitcoin chart. So uh, I think we probably had five waves up. We've done ABC down. I think you can buy that one here. Short term, you could use this low as a stop possibly if you want to just trade short term. I need to go down a little bit more to get my fill. I need to go down a couple hundred sats. Yeah. That's where I'm targeting. Around 6250 to 6,300 sats is where I'm targeting. We got filled there on that last capitulation wick, sold at the higher uh, top there in Discord, and now looking for it to come back around that range. So we'll see what happens. We got Danger Mouse says, should I sell BTT? I bought it 18 sats. It is going down. Well, if you phone it in at 18, it's hard for me to say, hey, cut your losses. What I can say about BTT is currently the only BTT on the market is the pre-mine from the team and anybody who purchased on Binance Launchpad. So what does that mean? That means on February 11th, there is going to be a massive influx of new BTT tokens that are going to be received by all TRX holders. Some of these, and probably a large percentage of them, could find their way onto the market from individuals looking to just capture the free Bitcoin by selling their BTT, as well as maybe had no interest in BTT to begin with, just kind of our diehard believers in TRX and saying, hey, I can get in some free money. So I believe that will cause some downward pressure on the market. And uh, if you rewind a little bit, I talked about my the other factors going into BTT is I thought there was a little manipulation. Usually with these new listings on Binance, it's straight up. There's not enough liquidity, and then it comes tumbling back down. There was massive buy and sell walls put on the market for Binance like I've never seen before. Hundreds of Bitcoin, which leads me to believe there was some insider kind of supporting the price action, trying to get some stability with the BTT leading into the initial airdrop on February 11th. We'll see how that plays out. Um, but again, it's hard for me to tell you to, hey, cut your losses because you bought in at 18 sats. But that's not something I would have even wanted to buy with at these current levels to begin with. I think we will see some downward pressure after that initial airdrop. We've gone over everything I had listed. That is what I got. Do you guys have any final questions? What do you, Let's do a quick poll. Do you guys think, well, you know, we've been doing this poll, but Bitcoin has not done anything. Somebody poke it with a stick. Are we heading to $3,000 Bitcoin? Or are we heading to four thousand dollar? We are right at that key level. Thirty four forty is the level me and Todd have been keying off of. We are right there. Are we going to four K or three K? Let us know in the comment section. Let's see if you guys are bullish or bearish. The news and the fundamentals coming out as of the past couple of days are pretty bullish. Price action has done nothing, but I think over the long term you guys will be happy accumulating at these levels, continuing to keep your miners online, your master nodes online, your staking wallets online. Don't turn those off. Yeah, eat that electric bill to accumulate these cryptocurrencies. We got 3K, 4K, 3K, 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 4K, 4K. It's looking like we're more bearish. We got Double T Crypto saying 3408 right now. On which exchange are you looking at that it is 3408? I just saw that too somewhere. 
But, uh, Pilton. Mike Junk says 1,100. You're not playing by the rules, Mike. But that shows us you are the you are the bearer of this comment section. S. Taj is not in here. Usually he's the bearer of the <laughs> comment section. Jack says 3K and then a really lackluster bounce, and then probably I would assume you think it's going to then, after that, go to 2.8K. Double T Crypto says still bearish. There you go. And I do, I do think Litecoin is going to have a pretty big rally once we get going here. And then Nivel Robertson says we need to have a 1.5K Bitcoin. I don't know if you think there's a gap fill there on the chart or what, but you said you, we need to have that 1.5K BTC, so we'll see what happens. Clifford Chapman says 2021 Big Moon. 2020 and 2021, I think the back end of 2020 to 2021, we're looking at 35 to 50K Bitcoin. Ari Paul, who I've told people to follow before, he's pretty smart in the space. He had made a tweet today that, uh, that a lot of institutions, I believe he was calling them, was saying that uh, they're wanting to buy Bitcoin. They really haven't, but they got everything in place. Basically, that they're going to chase a rally. I think they're kind of like short calls, trying to get some premium in while we're quiet here, thinking that the news is so bearish and the action is so bad that... Uh, we're going to work a little bit lower, but they're ready to chase when they need to. So I think they're going to be, they're going to chase here shortly. So before we head out, do you have an XLM or Cardano chart available? People were asking jet said Cardano. So I want to know if she wants you to look at the chart, but from a fundamental perspective, I like it guys. And I do have an interview with Charles Hoskinson himself. Check that out. Talking about ADA, talking about ETC and others. Um, and I think that you should probably have at least 10,000 ADA in your portfolio, depending on your portfolio size, guys. Don't go overboard with it. Uh, the reason I'm saying that is because they are starting to have staking tested on their network, and rumors are flying around that the minimum staking amount will be 10,000 ADA to be a, a network participant or a staking node on that network here in the future. Excellent. Not much to say on that chart. I mean, it's uh, been a solar dweller. Isn't this the one that... Uh Peter Brandt said it was going to zero. This is the one that Peter Brandt said was going to zero. He said that right around that. Uh, 10 cents here probably. No, the lower level. Yeah, around 10 cents, a little below 10 cents. Yeah. And um, then it rallied and trying to give some back. If you zoom out, can you zoom out to like a weekly chart? Around these levels historically has been a great time to start accumulating. Uh, Bit, well, not in the penny wise i guess i'm always looking at the satoshi chart but if you're trading with bitcoin now at the weekly levels uh this is a good time to accumulate xlm historically it's had about three four five six tests at these levels and satoshi so you and mech get to have the boxing match right isn't that right on this one well we had a bet on which one would be outperform oh and then i don't know what else the boxing match was for but uh, that didn't happen <laughs> Like a lot of things that Matt says will happen didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> like Litecoin going to five cents or five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's been bearish. Oh, that's all I got. Yeah, we're going to try to be here back like our normal schedule. I mean, like Nick said, we've had some bad weather. Uh, I had to go get me, uh, what, I got four heaters going in this place yeah it's freezing I, of course i bought the biggest unit in the building on the top floor with all the windows <laughs> and they gave me a furnace that someone half size place has so my furnace cannot take this cold of weather so the the last little tidbits of news is bitrex is adding more usd trading pairs the newest one is horizon zen so they're continuing to try to expand their us onboarding usd onboarding uh, platform there. Binance now does accept credit cards. This can be big. Right now, not so big, but once the market returns, that will uh, be very big. If you remember towards the top, the reason we started slowing down up there is Coinbase was having credit card issues. Credit card issuers were shutting it off, so it was a lot, getting a lot harder for new investors to continue to put their mar their money into the market space. Well, now Binance says, heck with it. They will be accepting Visa and MasterCard starting now, I believe, if you go over there. And then the other last, I thought there was one last thing. Oh, yes, a consensus developer has joined the Ethereum Classic Cooperative as an executive director. So another big name individual and OG of crypto space and a developer joining the Ethereum Classic team to continue to develop on their platforms. And then Chris Canine says, can you explain red packets to the community sometimes, Nick? So yes, Rapids RPD. Rapids Network has a partnership with somebody called Swift.pro, SWFT.pro. They have a desktop wallet and a mobile wallet. It allows you to trade, spend, share, RPD anywhere that you can post a URL. If you, you I could say 
I can make a red packet, 10 red packets for 1,000 RPD each. I could post that here on YouTube channel. The first 10 people to click on it will receive 1,000 RPD. Maybe we'll have to do that here shortly for a giveaway opportunity for those of you who tune in live. It's definitely a great application and use case of cryptocurrencies. As again, you can post that in a text message. You can post that in an email, chat boxes, Twitter, wherever it's at, and you can spend, share, tip, RPD and other crypto major cryptocurrencies anywhere and everywhere with the click of a button all with a username or an email address no confusing uh, wallet address needed which is really what we're going to need for mass adoption we're going to need ease of use where people can spend money just like they can on paypal with a username and that's really what uh, many projects are striving to do as well as rapids rpd with their their t telegram tip bot discord tip bot and swift with their red packet system so make sure to check that out and maybe we'll have to do a giveaway with the red packet on here shortly so we'll see what's going on it somebody said that btc had a red bar on coinbase pro what's that looking like before we get out of here todd what's btc doing i don't have that so maybe on coinbase man we just fell 15 dollars i guess in the last 10 minutes oh you need to zoom out i think you're on the one minute chart there outlaw <laughs> on the five second chart <laughs> hey tgs make sure to tune in live to our next show because we are about to TGS. head out of here thanks for tuning in guys it has been a while it has been a pleasure we will be back you know we are heading into the weekend we usually don't go live maybe we're going to do a patreon only live show this weekend for the january patreon only live show and giveaway if you want more access to us Join our Patreon, get over in our Discord as we, we're there 24-7 to answer your questions, look at some charts, and have some great discussion with Johnny M. Cool, Chris K9, Mox, and some of those guys are in there. So until next time, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and leave that comment section below for your chance to win. And stay tuned for your daily updates on cryptocurrencies right here at Learn Crypto. Peace out. Oh, I was hoping he had a buy signal for us. Not today. <laughs> no, not yet. Bye, bye, bye. GDX. There you go. I've, I've got, got balls of steel. Hey, stay positive, pal. Most people, when they lose, they whine and quit. But you got to be there for the turns. Everybody's got good luck. Everybody's got bad luck. Don't run when you lose. Play hard. Play clean. Be careful out there. We'll see you all again. Sleep tight. <laughs>